So the word I'd like to concentrate on now is swarat, which means fully independent. I'll read the first translation again. <coughs> o my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva, O all-pervading personality of Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primeval cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations and he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion as one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world, I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Mm. Long purport. Mm-hmm. Swarat. I just, yesterday we were discussing Abhigyaha, which means omniscient. So I'll read that, what Srila Prabhupada writes in this regard. In this shloka, the particular words Abhigyaha and Swarat are significant. These two words distinguish the Supreme Lord from all other living entities. No other living entity is either Abhigyaha or Swarat. That is, no one is either fully cognizant or fully independent. Even Brahma has to meditate upon the Supreme Lord in order to create. Then what to speak of great scientists like Einstein? The brains of such a scientist are certainly not the products of any human being. Scientists cannot manufacture such a brain and what to speak of foolish atheists who defy the authority of the Lord. Even Mayavadi impersonalists who, who flatter themselves that they can become one the, with the Lord are neither Abhigyaha or Swarat. It's a very simply stated point to just cut at the roots the Mayavad of presenting that the Jiva can become one with God. Someone may say that he's... The Mayavadis will advertise themselves as being Brahmalin, or means absorbed into the impersonal Brahman effulgence. Sakshat Brahma Swarup. There's one old man in Gujarat who's quite uh, widely advertised as Sakshat Brahma Swarup. Directly the form of transcendence. That's a big claim to make for, you know, some guy who's going to die soon. So, if he's Sakshat Brahma Swarup, which is actually a, a, a suitable nomenclature for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which he's not, then is he Abhigya? Is he all-knowing? And is he Swarat? Completely, uh, ruling completely without any competition or challenge. Or, so they may say, well, he's not manifesting that due to Leela. This is a clever argument because Krishna doesn't, when Krishna comes, who is actually Sakshat Brahma Sarup, he doesn't always manifest his greatness. He often plays as a little boy, but time to time he does show his greatness just to, you know, just to keep us convinced. And that also contributes to his Leela, but he doesn't he doesn't fully act as a human being, otherwise he would be, I suppose. 
if one if one is fully like a human being and under the control of material nature, then he's not God. So Krishna, just like for instance, playing as a child, afraid of his mother, who's received a complaint that he's eating dirt, opens his mouth. Yeah, I I I didn't eat dirt, Krishna says, and. Mother Yashoda looks in his mouth and sees all the Bhumirapa on the lower bayou, all the all the earth, all the water, all the fair fire, air, ether, and everything in the whole universe. So in one sense when Krishna says I didn't eat dirt, dirt it's true. He may have been. We don't know from the story whether whether he was actually uh, accused unfairly by Balaram and others or whether he actually had dirt. It's not described in the Bhagavatam. But even if he had de- dirt, it would not be untrue of Krishna to say that I didn't eat dirt, because anyway, all the dirt in the universe is already in his mouth. So he shows his greatness, his godness, even during his Vrindavan Leela, and that adds sweetness to it, actually. I think it's a good idea to move the Bhagavatam from Prabhupada's feet. I don't think Prabhupada would be too... I mean, we never saw Srila Prabhupada keep the Bhagavatam at his feet. So, better we don't place it there. Mm, so, that that even adds to the sweetness of Krishna's Vrindavan Lila, to understand that he's God, and for the Vrajvasis to see his extraordinary activities and not understand that he's God, adds to us our appreciation of the Vrajvasis and their love for Krishna. Mm. So that Krishna is Swarat or Swaraj, the original term is Swaraj. And Swaraj, it's a well-known term. Raj means... Kingdom. Raj, yeah, Raja is king and Raj or Raja is kingdom or the or the state of kingship. So Krishna here his Swaraj is quite different to that of a worldly king. Is his when when it's Srila Prabhupada translates this as self-sufficient. In, well, many times he translates that as independent. Let's just see, we read it just now. Mm, fully independent. Now, a king who is very powerful may seem to be fully independent. No one can challenge his supremacy. Or... Even not being a king, uh, one may attempt to be self-sufficient. You don't need anyone's help for anything. But it's it's not possible to be fully self-sufficient. It's considered a a quality for a person to be self-sufficient. He's not a child. Is just the opposite. A child is completely. A young child is completely dependent upon his parents. But as the child becomes older, he attains some level of independence and there comes a point where he doesn't need his parents' physical help or he may think he doesn't need their guidance and the only bond that's left between the parents and the children is if the child has a sense of gratefulness to the parents. He becomes, to a large extent, self-sufficient. So this is considered a quality, that you don't always need someone to do everything for you. You're, you're quite capable of surviving in the world by yourself. But ultimately no one is self-sufficient, because we all depend upon others. You may say, well, I, I don't, I, I'll work, I'm a self-made man. 
Who was that was telling us? Solomon, the body was telling me. Self-made man means I didn't. I I made a success of myself in the world, and I didn't. I wasn't dependent on anyone helping me to come up or any favors, but just by my own hard work, I worked hard and I, I made myself. Who was that one devotee was telling me that? I can't remember who. His uncle or someone was telling me like that. But we rely on so many preconditions. If, if there's no stable social system, then you can't, it becomes a lot more difficult to be self-made. Or even uh, self-made means one acquire in this material world means one acquires a position of lording it over the material world. But if there's no material world to lord it over, then how could you lord it over it? But Krishna is truly self-sufficient in as much as he is fully in control of everything. And even one may say, well, I'm self-sufficient, I'm self-independent, I don't care for anyone, but he's under the control of the laws of nature, and he'll have to die. But Krishna never has to die. And <clears throat> just like in, in this material world, you know, one, one requires people to lord it over, and then, then uh, Srila Prabhupada often gave the example, if one doesn't have a family, then he gets a dog or a cat or a bajriga to for companionship, but that's also for controlling. People like dogs, isn't it? They like because you control the dog, and the dog is uh, he likes that and he reciprocates with that. And he licks you and all this kind of thing that people like. So people like that because they have a sense, oh, I'm the controller. I'm controlling this dog. And the dog, li the dog likes me for controlling it. You don't have a discussion with the dog. What do you think? You just tell the dog, you do this. And he does it. So people like that. They have a sense of controlling. But Krishna is fully independent because... Everyone and everything is completely under his control. And even if, just like we see when Lord Brahma took away Krishna's, the, the calves and the cowherd boys, and he thought, well, now Krishna can't play his play anymore. I spoiled his game. His he's, he's nasty Brahma came and, of course, we shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that because... He's our Acharya. But he took, he took the role of a, someone spoiling the game. Took everyone away. But Krishna is not even reliable. He's not even relying on his devotees. In other sense he does. We'll come to that later. But he can reproduce them again. As he showed. Eko Bahu Syat. From one became many. Everything is Krishna, in one sense. Everything is an expansion of Krishna. And he's fully self-sufficient in as much as he produces everything for his own enjoyment. He's the most self-centered, egoistic person. <laughs> no one can imagine. He's the, but he, that's for him, that's good, because he is actually the center of everything. When someone is very much self-centered and egoistic, anyone apart from Krishna, it becomes distasteful. Someone said that to me. Said, well, isn't that egoistic? Krishna says, surrender everything to me only. It is, but then Krishna is in that position to do that. That is his position. For anyone else to take that position is false egoism. But for Krishna to do that is... That's his position. Just like we say, Jive Surup Hoi Krishna Nitya Das. So, Krishna Nitya Surup Hoi, Jive Surup, Krishna Surup Hoi, Jive Nitya Prabhu. His position is the eternal master of all the Jivas and of everything else. The Jivas and the inert matter, everything. 
everything is under Krishna's control. He doesn't he doesn't need anyone, but nevertheless he expands himself as the living entities to expand his enjoyment because he is Rasovai Saha. He is by nature he is Rasa. So Rasa means exchange and Krishna expands himself as his various Vishnu forms, <laughs> as his Shakti Tattva, as the Jiva Tattva, and as the uh, the inert matter also, his Bahiranga Shakti. And everything is simply for his enjoyment, which sounds extremely egoistic, but then Krishna is also free of the fault of trying to lord it over in an exploitive way because he doesn't need to he doesn't need to exploit anything because he's not he's not lacking anything uh, he, so he, he doesn't need to take anything from anyone or, or forcibly grab it from them and he's completely in control of everything although it may seem that others are independent of him but actually he's totally in control so Krishna is full and complete and perfect and fully in, he's fully involved with every jiva but at the same time he's independent of them. So th- this is one of the symptoms, another symptom of the Supreme Personality of Godhead which no one else has. That he's fully... If he were dependent upon anyone else, then he wouldn't be God. Not if he were controlled by material nature, then he couldn't be supreme. Therefore, therefore the certain propositions that certain people make are, are simply absurd. When they speak about Krishna, completely absurd, just like people say, well, he's very cruel, he kills or that they, they blame Krishna in so many ways. But the very nature of Krishna is that he is Namase Purushang Twadyam Ishwarang Prakrite Param. He is the original person and he is beyond material nature. He's not affected by material nature. He doesn't perform activities for the sa- He performs activities, but not for the same reason that, that conditioned souls perform activities. In one sense, for the same same reason, for enjoyment. But but Krishna, he's he's not struggling with material nature, or scheming how to adjust it in various ways for his own enjoyment. But he's a, even though he comes within this material world, he's always transcendental to it. Although it appears that he acts within this world, he has nothing to do with the three modes of material nature. Mm, Asia, what, what is that term? Uh, Prakriti Stopi Jad Gunai. How does that verse begin? That, uh, this is the godness of God. The, the very what is his godness? That Prakriti Stopi Tad Gunai. Nayujate Sadatmastai. The the godness of God is that even though he appears within this material world, the Prakriti Staha, appears as if situated uh, within, within the material world. Uh, prakriti Stopitad Gunai, Nayuja. And now, even though he's within the atmosphere of the three modes of material nature, he's not, atta- he's not attached there. They're not controlling him. But he is Sadatmasta. He's all. 
sada mastahi. He's always fixed within himself, within his own nature. Mm, I'm just trying to think. Etad ishanam ishasya. This is the ishanam, the controller, his his uh, isha, ishasya. In, uh, no. Etad ishanam. Now the ishanam, the the godness of of ish, ishasya of God, is this that he is even though he appears to be situated within this material world. He is always independent of it. So this is, at the beginning of Bhagavatam, this point is to be understood clearly. It is, all of these points of Bhagavatam given in the first verse are explained and elaborated on throughout the Bhagavatam, just like this verse I was just quoting. Eitad ishanam ishasya prakti staya eitad gana. Na yujjate sadatma staya. Yatabud his tadasha, and the last line says that his devotees also are in have the same quality. So uh, all, all of these points are elaborated again and again, and by statements such as the verse I just quoted, and by the pastimes of the Lord, which are described, just like this one of of uh, Brahma stealing the cowherd boys and the cows, the cows. That Krishna shows his supremacy and his independence. It is demonstrated. He is fully independent. So this independence of the Supreme Lord is is another feature. If he is under the control of nature or not able to do whatever he likes, then He's not God. That theory is the modern theological theory. I mean, when we say theological, I don't mean it means speculative theology. Real theology is Srimad Bhagavatam. And what goes on in the theology in the universities, and it's just people, doctor frogs from within the well trying to explain who is God. So, the, the perennial problem of, of Semitic theology that if God is all good and all powerful, why is there suffering in the world? And they try to explain because some woman a long time ago ate an apple. That's, that's the reason for all the suffering of the human race. That's one explanation. Not very good theology. <coughs> Pretty poor theology. Um, so it's, anyway, it's a, a perennial, and some of them try to solve it by saying that, well, there's just, there's, there's the chosen people, and then God chooses some to suffer and go to hell forever, and you have to become chosen, either by being born as a Jew, or by being um Bathed in the blood of Jesus. You know, it's another horrible idea. I don't want to be bathed in the blood of Jesus. Oh, it's a horrible idea. But they have this idea that once you become bathed in the blood of Jesus, then you, do, then you become free from all sin. And then you can go on sinning as much as you like. And anyway, they have many misconceptions. So, uh, and the, what, about 30 years ago, the, the liberal theologian, well, maybe that's not correct to call him a liberal theologian, but uh, anyway, just another bewildered theologian, try, trying with, out of his tiny intelligence to make sense of, the, of what he observes and try to explain God's role in it without taking knowledge from the Bhagavatam from realized sources. He doesn't, they don't have actual knowledge, so you can't get it by speculating. Anyway, Rabbi Hari Krishna, with the, um, faced with the problem of if God is all-powerful and all-good, then he should, there should not be any suffering in the world because he loves us and he should, by his power, he should remove all the suffering. 
So he came to the conclusion that certainly God is all good. We can't think that God is not good. But it seems that he's a nice guy, but he's not really in control of everything. And so, you know, it's not his fault that the world is bad. But, you know, he's getting old and... I don't know if he said that, but... <laughs> his, he's an apologist for God. He's trying to, you know... You know, don't blame God. It's not really his fault, but, you know... He snoozed one time and think, in the, he was busy overseeing everything and then he kind of snoozed off and things got out of control. And, and he created it, but he couldn't really keep a control of it. And So, you know, God's a nice guy. and You can pray to him, but he can't help you that much. <laughs> so, this apparent theism, actually it's not theism, it's, it's atheism in the guise of theism. If they if they cannot if they don't understand if they cannot uphold the basic principle of Ishanam Ishasya, the godness of God is that He is all powerful and fully independent and all good. If they if they cannot uphold these principles then it, they don't... Re- who are they worshipping? It's not re- it's not actually Bhagavan. It's not Krishna. They have a concept and they're worshipping a concept. But they don't know Krishna who is fully independent, all-powerful, all-good. Then why is there suffering in the world? We create. Purusha Sukha Dukanam Bhutridve Hetu Ruchati, as Lord Krishna says. The sufferings and so called enjoyment of persons in this material world are caused by himself, by the misuse of our tiny independence. The laws are in place, they're given by God. If we, if we transgress them, then we become implicated in suffering by our own misuse of independence. This is the proper explanation. So he is fully independent. He makes the laws and by the nature of his full independence, he doesn't have to follow the laws himself. Just like people say, well, Krishna is immoral, he's dancing with others' wives. Now, actually, from various perspectives, that is incorrect, because everyone else is immoral, everyone is immoral because they are taking Krishna's property. Only Krishna is moral. Any man who thinks, this is my wife, instead of thinking, this is, this is meant, this person, is meant for Krishna's enjoyment, not for my enjoyment, then he's in Maya. And the same with everything. If you think, this is my pen, instead of thinking, this is within my care for Krishna's service, then that is Maya. That is illusion. So, Krishna, he... It's not possible that he can be immoral, because morality stems from him. We can say immoral according to our judgment, but then we are not the uh, arbitrators of reality or morality or anything. He is. What he says is correct. And even if he apparently breaks the law, then it doesn't make any difference because... He is above the law. That is the nature of a king. He is above the law. Now, this can be misused in the material world because a king in the material world is only a king on behalf of Krishna. He's he's, he's apparently independent within the jurisdiction. He has traditionally kings. They they can do whatever they like. But that is 
a borrowed independence, borrowed from Krishna to execute a great purpose. And actually, Krishna himself with his independence, he doesn't misuse it, he acts for the benefit of others. That's, uh, but even if he apparently were not to do so, even if Krishna apparently mistreats someone, then he can do so, and actually that is always beneficial. For even to be mistreated by Krishna, what we may consider mistreated, that's beneficial for the jiva. Just like we find when Krishna entered Mathura, there was a washerman. Oh, what's the, what's the word used in Sanskrit? I'm just not remembering now. Mm. It's, it's not just washing, but he dyes clothes. Ranga. Mm. He dyes the clothes and makes nice colors. So he's bringing clothes for the king. And Krishna came up to him and said, well, give them to me. And the washerman said, quite rightly from the material standpoint, that, you, what do you think you are? These are the king's clothes. You're just young boys. Don't you know the, the proper behavior? You can't take anything of the king. So what he said from the worldly point of view is correct. That every, the king is the king's thing. You just can't, you can't, you can't take anyone's things. What to mention the king's things? But Krishna cut his head off. <laughs> That's the reply he got. He didn't get a chance to argue with him because he didn't have a head left to argue with. So it may appear that Krishna was, it was not very fair why he did that. Same thing with Hiranyakashi, we were discussing the other day. He didn't, Krishna just came and killed him. He didn't give him a trial or, you know, didn't give him a chance to plead. You know, I was mistreated in my childhood by my father or any such thing. He just immediately ripped out his belly. So it may appear that Krishna is unfair. But he has the full right to do so. Even if it's unfair, that unfairness is actually beneficial for the person, the washerman who was... Actually, he was a demon. Because even though it appeared that he, what he was saying was right, it wasn't. It was wrong because who he was speaking to was Krishna. So what he said applies in all cases except that of Krishna. Or in most cases, but except that of Krishna. And it, it may be also that, just like Jagannath Mishra, he was in a dream he was chastised by a brahmana that, that why are you always chastising your son? What if he's a great personality, a great self-realized soul or and Jagannath Mishra so still it's my duty to chastise him and teach him on his father. So Jagannath Mishra he was doing the same thing. He to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was saying you shouldn't behave like this, this is wrong, you should know how to behave properly. So the difference between Jagannath Mishra and the washerman is that the washerman, he didn't have that attitude of love toward Krishna. So he became, even he may not have knew, known who he was dealing with, with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but he became a demon for not recognizing that. Because uh, the, the jiva is supposed to recognize Krishna. If you don't, if you, if you have allegiance to Kangsa, even just thinking he's the king, I should serve him. Because he is inimical to Krishna, you become implicated in the same crime. Sangadosh, the fault of bad association, even great devotees, Bhishma, Drona, by bad association they became implicated. So Krishna is fully independent. There's a, an anecdote to demonstrate how independent a king is that in the maybe 19th century at some point the, the Shah of Iran at that time visited England 
And during the course of his tour of the Tower of London, which is a famous prison in England, not anymore, but they used to, many of the prominent political dissidents, they were imprisoned there and tortured there and killed there. It's an infamous place. <laughs> so they, he was shown their agility, the Shah of Iran, which he hadn't seen or heard of before, which is more associated with France, but anyway, this is how I heard the story. He was shown a guillotine, and he said, well, this is for executing people. He said, oh, really? That's interesting. Can you show me how it works? Put one of your men in show. He said, no, no, we, we can't do that. He said, no. Why not? Well, it's against the law. What do you mean against the law? I, I'll give one of my own men who I brought. I want to see how it works. They said, no, no, we can't do even with your men. He said, we have laws. And, you know, he said, they said, you don't know what a king is. I'm a key failed insulted. I'm a king. And I'm, you know, I'm asking to see. And you're, how can you deny? <laughs> that is independence. Whatever he wants for his own pleasure, right or wrong. Of course, in this case, the, the king in this world, he's not so independent. He has to, there are the laws of God, which the laws of material nature. If one grossly uh, <coughs> transgresses them, even the king, he becomes a sinner. Vena Maharaj is an example. He, mis, he, he highly misused his independence. But the, the general principle there is that what the king says, that must be correct. Because it must be followed by everyone. And he, he can demand anything, whatever he likes. Of course, the king should be trained to be not whimsical. But then Krishna sometimes appears to be whimsical. <laughs> He's fully independent. And whatever he does, because... By nature, he is Suhridam Sarvabhutanam. He is the friend and well-wisher of everyone. So, even if for Krishna's pleasure, someone is apparently mistreated, it's always ultimately for their benefit. Just like Krishna enjoys fighting. And so, so many people get killed by Krishna. Actually, everyone gets killed by him ultimately, directly or indirectly. But he kills so many demons. That's his pleasure. He enjoys fighting. But those who are killed, they become benefited. And even hearing about their killing now is beneficial for us. So sometimes people criticize. Christians in India, they criticize. Our Jesus is the Prince of Peace and your Krishna is always killing so many people. Yeah, he's killing them. That's right. <laughs> he's killing them. That's his mercy. I say, well, then you should, then you should kill everyone. That's one Christian said to me. If that's, he thought it was absurd, and I said, well, he is anyway. Directly or indirectly, he's Grasishnu Prabhavishnu. Grasishnu means he uh, he devours everyone, and Prabhavishnu means he he uh, develops Prabhavishnu. Translation. He devours and develops everyone. So, he's fully independent. Now this, this verse is describing the godness of God, this first verse of the Bhagavatam. And why is the Bhagavatam the highest literature? We have the Vishnu Purana also, in which the same principles are described of the godness of God. And the same avatars are described. But the Bhagavatam in particular brings out the godness of God beyond his godness. I was talking about that yesterday. That beyond his being the greatest, the most it was omniscient, omnipotent and omnipresent. He's more important than that is that Raso Vayasaha. He is Rasa. He is Lila Mai. He performs he performs wonderful pastimes. Krishna, the original form of the personality of Godhead, 
Krishna is still Bhagavan Swayam. Krishna is the original person of the of the all non-different forms. Advaita Machutam Anadim Ananta Rupam Adyang Purana Purusham Navayovanam Cha. He is one person, but he expands into many forms. Navi, which are always fresh and new. Videshu Durlavam. This is why he's difficult to understand through the Vedas. This other Vaishnav Sampradayas, they criticize. What is all this? Radha and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What's the Vedic evidence? But Vedeshu Durlava. This, this aspect of God is beyond the Vedas. The Vedas, it's there in the Vedas. Gopal Tapani especially. Gopal Tapani Upanishad described. That's also Veda. Uh, and in other parts of the Vedas. But it's Vedeshu Durlava. It's difficult to find from the Vedas because the Vedas describe the godness of God. But and even though the the Ramanuj Sampradaya and Madhva Sampradaya especially very strongly establish that God is a person, but they only go as far as his godness. They go a little further also, especially in the Ramanuj Sampradaya. But the, the full implication of him being a person is that he is Leela Mai. He is full of wonderful, loving pastimes. The full implication of being, him being Rasa Vaisa is that the, all the rasas, the, the, the mundane uh, uh, expounders of rasa, Bharat Muni, he's explained all the... Before Rupa Goswami, at least chronologically we can say, you know, because Krishna, he existed before Bharat Muni. <laughs> so, uh, but Bharat Muni is the Vedic authority on rasa. The, Nritya Shastra means drama, dance. So he's described all these rasas, this Shanta, Dasya, uh, Sakya, Vatsalya, and Shringa Rasa. Now these are the, these are the rasas which can be enjoyed by enjoyed by who? By human beings. The dogs and cats, they to some extent, but certainly the all the uh, intricacies and nuances of rasa which can be experienced by cultured human beings and the poetry rasa is expressed in poetry 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 then comes to song and song comes to dance and so the ultimate expression of, of rasa is that ras lila so, the cultured human beings can experience that. So, in mundane personality, if there is shringa ras, or the, the ras of loving, then that should not be denied in the personality of Godhead. <coughs> that he's only... The, only you go as far as him being majestic. Then you don't... And you very strongly insist that he's a person... But his personality goes to majesty. Or uh, they admit the Lakshmi as the wife of Narayan. But not Lakshmi, we don't, we don't hear very much. It's a very private affair, a very staid affair. You know what staid means? It means S T A I D. It means very sober and respectable. Uh, that Vaikuntha Ras means two and a half Rasas. Shanta Ras, Dasya Ras, and Gaurav Sakya Ras. The friendship, but friends with Narayan, but respectful. Whereas beyond that, especially Vraja Bhakti Ras, especially has the Vishrambha, the Vishrambha Sakya Ras, in which there's no sense of awe and reverence. The, the cowherd boys, they can jump on Krishna's back, slap him on the back, steal his lunch box, 
fight with him and call him bad names, all this kind of thing, out of love. <coughs> then Vatsalya Ras, that's there in Ram Lila, Vaman Lila, that's there, fully developed in Vraja Lila. And Sringaras, that's admitted, but the full extent of that is there in Ramya Kachid Upasana Vrajavadhu Vargena Ya Kalpita that of the gopis that is the ultimate expression of love of Krishna so Krishna is the supreme person and independence he's fully independent the godness as long as we stress the godness of God his independence is there the, the, the special gift of the Bhagavatam is to see how out of rasa, that Krishna, out of love, that Krishna, all these statements of, of the, which, on which the whole understanding of God is based, they all become turned upside down. And out, out of rasa, that he who is independent, fully independent, not dependent on anyone, he himself says, Aham bhakta parad he no. Nahi Swatantri Hadvija. He says that he tells Durvasa Muni that I am not indep- I am fully dependent on my devotees. I am not I am not in he specifically states I am not independent. Swatantra. Swatantra and Swaraj are more or less synonyms. So he says, I'm not independent. He becomes dependent on his devotees. So this is the... Bhagavatam is, first of all, establishes who is God. There is God. What is the nature of God? Who is that person? Just like so many times Srila Prabhupada was asked. Oh, he would say that. You don't know who is God. You ask me, I'll tell you. You're, you're speculating who is God. Why don't you find out from someone who... How are you going to find out? You ask someone who knows. I can tell you, Krishna is God. And you, you say, well, I don't accept that. Then what's your answer? You can show anyone who's better than Krishna. Who f- God means... Aishvaryasya, Samagrasya, Viryasya, Yashasya, Sriha, Jnana, Vairagya, Yostraya, Shandang, Bhagavatingana. Who possesses these six qualities in full, all... Wealth, all strength, all fame, all knowledge, all beauty, and all renunciation. So this is the scientific definition of God. If anyone has all these qualities in full, he must be God. You know, unless you want to you know, juggle words and, and re- redefine God. But God means the supreme being. And this is the definition. So who fits that? Who fits that description? That is Krishna. You cannot find anyone who can fit that description. Only Krishna. So he must be God. So definitely he is God. And he's independent. All, the, all his wealth, strength, knowledge, fame, that they are, they are eternal attributes. He, does, he has all wealth. Does, it means he didn't steal it from someone else. Hiranyakashipu, he tried to become God by by acquiring powers and then conquering the universe. But Krishna never had to do any such thing. Just like Prabhupada, he, he uh, spoofed the... Spoof, you know what that means? He made fun of, sorry. He made fun of the... Uh, he showed the absurdity of persons who they, they claim to meditate with the aim of becoming God. But Krishna said, Srila Prabhupada said, Krishna never had to meditate to become God. Even when he was a, on the lap of his mother, baby, he killed Putana and showed his Godness. So who is God? He doesn't have to do anything to become God. If you, if you have the idea that you will become God, that means you're getting a favor from someone else. Then you're not God. Or you're taking power from somewhere else. But 
by his nature everything is automatically uh, within all powers, with all opulences, all attributes are automatically, we can say within him, but they're not different from him. They, they are of his being. They are of his swarup. Radharani is called the swarup shakti of Krishna. She is the she is as much Krishna as Krishna is Krishna. She is, she is as much necessary to Krishna's Krishna-ness as he himself is. The, the, the absolute truth is both male and female, not just male. <laughs> that, so even if people go up to the level of, under, of accepting Krishna, without Radha, they're still, their knowledge is incomplete. So Srimad Bhagavatam is the complete exposition of God. First of all, establish what is the nature of God, who is that person, and then his godness beyond, or, or his personality beyond his godness. So he's all knowing, but he 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 appears to forget that he's God. When he <coughs> that he's independent means he feeds everyone, but he forgets that he's God and comes to Mother Yashoda, please feed me, I'm hungry. As if dependent. But then, at the, then again he'll show that while well, Mother Yashoda, he, I, I, she, Krishna's afraid he does, that Mother Yashoda is going to punish me and then Krishna opens his mouth and shows the whole universe is with, and she can even see herself looking in Krishna's mouth. And then you get the Russian doll effect. There's one inside another because inside, inside, Mother Yashoda is looking in Krishna's mouth and she sees the whole universe, including herself looking in Krishna's mouth. And that Mother Yashoda that she's looking at, there's another Mother Yashoda inside that Krishna's mouth. It's all the same Krishna. So it's like a Russian doll effect. One inside another, inside another, inside another. So how is that? A Krishna knows, he does, does he know he's God or he doesn't know when he's performing his Vrindavan pastimes? Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says both things are true simultaneously. He knows he's God and he doesn't know he's God. Can you understand that? Not very likely. That's called inconceivable. So, achintya, yes. This word is so much important. This is the, the, the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu <coughs> in giving achintya bheda bed tattva has given the key to understand God as far as the jiva can understand Him. And the understanding begins with understanding that we can't understand, therefore achintya. When we understand that we can't understand everything, then you can begin to understand. Doesn't make any sense, does it? Not on the material plan. But there, there is a lot we can understand. I mean, compared to, I mean, definitely compared to the theore, th- theoretical moronics of of <laughs> modern theolo- or theologians. I don't know if there's any such word. I think I just made that up. But, but you know, just just such foolishness. You know, all suffering, human suffering, is caused because. <coughs> Someone had an apple. You know, it's just, I mean, it's... Just, I mean, to say it's childish, I mean, it's almost, I mean, it's almost insulting to children to say it's childish. <laughs> I mean, it's, but the, the, the whole modern civilization grew up on the basis of this it's an extremely puerile, that's another word which means childish, it's, you know, and they're fighting wars over it and becoming martyrs and oh, just, just such a stupid idea. I mean, that's just one example. They have many wrong. They they know so little that they have to make up to to fill up the massive theological holes in their theories. 
they have to invent limbo and purgatory. It's just invented. It's not in the Bible. In the Bible, anyway. Right, all that. They, they mistake Jesus for God. and I mean, It's just so many mistakes. It's just amazing that any good came out of it at all, which some good has come out of it, despite all this. So Srila Prabhupada, he often used to say that if people would come and they talk about God, and, well, why don't they take the Bhagavatam? If you're actually interested in God, if you're really serious to understand, then you should take the Bhagavatam. Take this knowledge. Why do you deny? Why are you stuck? I'm a Christian, or I'm a Muslim. Why don't you take this? If you want higher knowledge, if you're actually sincere, then you should take it. That's why I'm not that much impressed by all this. I devote is going to these interfaith conferences and seeing what you can learn from others. I mean, by the grace of Srila Prabhupada, we have, we shouldn't think I'm better than others, but we have the knowledge which is certain. It, this, this is Bhagavad Tattva Vigyanam. This is the scientific knowledge of the personality of Godhead, which is somewhat guessed at with, with some massive misinterpretations in other supposedly theological systems. I mean, why don't interfaith means? It's, it's, again, putting the stress on faith, like it's all just faith. It's just something you, you believe in, but no. No, faith certainly is required, but this is the scientific knowledge of the personality of Godhead. Why don't we, why don't we, first of all, why don't we define what we're aiming at? And then what is the nature of God? Your term God, what is the nature of God? Oh, even before that, actually when Srila Prabhupada went with Christians, he, before he would discuss anything about theology, he would talk about what are the basic principles of religion. Mercy, cleanliness, truthfulness, austerity, which are destroyed by meat-eating, gambling, intoxication, and illicit sex. So first you stop. First you close your slaughterhouses, and then you know wipe wipe the meat out of your you know what wipe the meat out of your mouth, and then you're going to talk. You know you've got all blood falling out of your mouth, and you're going to talk about God. And what are the basic principles of religion? Bhagavatam is a complete course in true theology. Theology and beyond. God is supremely independent. Yet he becomes dependent upon his devotees out of love. So there's a dis some discussion of the independence of the personality of Godhead. Independent, yet love means interdependence, doesn't it? If we find in the uh, Mahabharat the discussion of uh, Drupad Maharaj and of Drona, who they, they studied together as children. And later Drona, by... His fortune became a very poor brahmana. And Drupad, as a king, became... He was very rich. So at some point, Drona being so poor that uh, he went to beg. He went to, he went to Drupad, thinking he's my old friend. And he'll help me out. He was embarrassed because his son was drinking. He was so poor, he didn't know what milk was. So his, they, his young boy's friends gave him chalk mixed with water and told him it was milk. And when Drona heard about this, he became so sorry. I can't even... My son's being insulted. He doesn't even know what milk is. So Drupad, when he went to, He ended his court, Drona, and and said, oh, my old friend, Drupad. He said, what do you mean, friend? You're just a poor Brahmin. I'm a rich king. You can't be my friend. Friendship is between equals. We're not equals. So, rasa means exchange of loving relationships. Or, or, no, it doesn't mean that, but it means that which is uh, produced from activities of loving relationships. So that is 
possible when there's a sense of equality. So, this rasa, relationships, lila, that is possible when there is, uh, on God's part, he comes down from his position of being wholly independent. He doesn't come down from it, but he appears to do so. So, Lila modifies the position of the Supreme Lord, and especially Vraja Lila. In the many Leelas, they, they show the greatness of the Supreme Lord, just like Nrushimha Lila. It shows to some extent. It doesn't show the extent. But it shows Hiranyakashipu had made himself into a mini god or an imitation god, apparently god. And Krishna showed, actually, I'm still god. <laughs> By my grace, you became for a short time apparently independent, apparently all powerful. But I'm still god. So he showed his greatness. Although it could be said in another way that maybe his greatness would be greater demonstrated if he didn't fight with Hiranyakashipu. If he just came in front of him or just sent a message that, look, I'm God and you're finished. That's all. Now you have to die. And then... People think well, he does it with some Mahisha 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 Sura Mahisha Mahisha She kills I think she kills life Both of Krishna comes and he shows mercy. And at the same time, he gives mercy to his devotees. And at the same time, he shows The ultimate reason is for all his other power. He's just enjoying himself, that's all. So, beyond his greatness, his desire to enjoy. Or, or, uh, more central to his own personality is his desire to enjoy. And that means with others, to enjoy with other people. So to enhance his enjoyment, he becomes as if one of them and is and as if dependent upon them. This point is illuminated in the Bhagavatam. Hare Krishna. Yeah, any question about this? Uh, yeah, sure. Mm. Right, that's right, yeah. Hempite, yeah. He said, well, I'm not a hempite. In a previous life, he was the one who uh, Lord Ram heard the man saying, chastising his wife, that you're a, you're a unchaste. I'm not going to take you back in the home. You're going in someone else's, some other man's home. I'm not like Lord Ram who will, his wife goes to another man's home and he takes him back. So that person became the, the washerman. So his attitude was wrong. His attitude towards Krishna was wrong. So, yeah? Yeah. 
how <coughs> how can mm, Gaudiya Vaishnavas, uh, which they have this knowledge about Krishna's greatness and Krishna's going beyond his godness, how can they relish this spontaneous rasa? How can they forget this at the same time? study all this yeah then we should if, if we're going to have the, relish the spontaneous rasa with Krishna then uh, we'd better not read about his greatness we'd better read only about his intimate pastimes that might appear to be true and there are certain devotees called <laughs> Prakrita Sahajiyas <laughs> who, who say like that we don't want philosophy, we only want to hear about Krishna's intimate pastimes. Um, but then we see that the, even the persons who even the Prakrita Sahajiyas laud, the Vishwa Chagra Thakur is very, they like to read it, but he also, he's given commentary on the whole Bhagavatam, and he was very much learned in all philosophies, as we find from his comments on the prayers of the personified Vedas. So, there are, and then again, Jiva Goswami, well, some of this Prakrita Sahajiyas, they criticize Jiva Goswami as being, also, so, so much philosophy, why so much philosophy? Some of them, Prakrita Sahajiyas, that's a, that's a broad, generic term. Some of them, especially those, uh, Vama Kopinis, what's that called? Sharamayas, they criticize. Not Sharamaya. What's the I can't remember. So they uh, they criticize the uh, they criticize Jeev Goswami. It's, oh, too much philosophy. But uh, <laughs> we find that if the followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu they have presented this uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching they have presented, the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is presenting that which is Anarpita Chiring Chirat Karunya Abhati Anokolo Sanapita Muntatanchmala Rasa Sravakti Shriyam. That he is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Radha and Krishna come to offer that which was never offered before, the highest rasa, the resplendent rasa of his own love. So they. Uh, worship Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and they aspire to serve Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan and at the same time they uh, relish the greatness of Krishna and the, the greatness understood in various ways. Like I was saying, one, one, one recurring theme which we find in, in all Vaishnavism, not only Gorya Vaishnavism, is his greatness as God and his Bhaktabhat Salya. He's kind even to his, he's very famous, Ram is kind even to the uh, squirrel. Or he's kind even to Guha, who's, a, who's an outcast. And, and Krishna, he doesn't accept the kingly delicacies offered by uh, Duryodhana, but he accepts the banana peels mistakenly given by the wife of Vidura. So that adds to the relish, understanding his greatness, and at the same time appreciating the internal leelas the, and the, in Gaur Leela when one is one is not directly in Gaur Leela one is not directly participating in Radha Krishna Leela but is a, is a, or Vraj Leela not every follower of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in the, the camp of the gopis uh, but they are appreciating that and in Krishna Leela, one enters into that. But in Gaur Leela, one uh, appreciates that, one step removed. 
and preaches that also. So preaching as a service to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that requires philosophical exposition. So by the grace of the Lord, they're able to relish. It's not that it's not that as the Prakriti Sahajiyas say that this philosophy it's that's not the real thing, that's a lower thing. How can we say? And then all the great Acharyas, beginning from Rupa Goswami, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself was discussing philosophy with Prakash Ananda Saraswati and others. Now that may be considered to some extent external, but it's it's external to the uh, rasa nirya, rasa nirya, so the the uh, or the the tasting of the direct tasting of rasa, but it's not it's not external to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's lila or to his service. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also does that out of his kindness to the jivas. And again, it's not just kindness to the jivas, but he also enjoys that. Because discussion about Krishna is all, it's by devotees uh, that satang prasanga mama virya sangvido bhavanti hritkarna rasayana kataha it's always pleasing to the devotees. So, it seems you're having a little difficulty understanding this point. It, it's, maybe it's something like Krishna, he is sucking the breast of Mother Yashoda and at the same, you know, he'll, he'll jump down and kill a demon. So, they appear to be contradictory. The two things don't take place at the same time. That would be rasa bas. The, the vira ras and the uh, the Krishna's heroic pastimes and his in the same Vrindavan in the same day he'll kill a big demon and and helplessly call for his mother to please feed me I'm hungry. So these. These two moods, they're not, they can't stand at this. They're both present in Krishna, but they're not in the same place in the same time. But it's the same Krishna. <coughs> so, generally, just like in, in Ras Lila, if the gopis start uh, discussing about how to defeat Mayavad, that would be Rasa Bas. <laughs> Although sometimes you hear the parrots in Vrindavan, they discuss these things. But uh, those same gopis come in Gorlila and discuss these points. <laughs> so there's a time and a place for everything. <laughs> but... Uh, it has its, it's, it's not outside the scope of advanced Krishna consciousness, but it has, it has to be understood where, when, and how it should be executed. Yeah. Yesterday evening, you mentioned these semi-theistic philosophies like Mayavadis. Semi-theistic. Actually, I, Mayavad is not really semi-theistic, it's pseudo-theistic. That would be a better term. Because it, it, they pretend to be believing in God. But, the ultimate, but, but the, they say Ishvara controls everything, but then ultimately they say Ishvara has no form, no attributes no qualities. So it's like saying that, yeah, I believe that cows exist. I have no problem with that, but I don't believe in any animals with four legs and horns that make a mmm sound and give milk. But I believe in cows. It's, it becomes meaningless. 
It's a God without any attributes. Then anything without any attributes is, is nothing. So it's pseudo-theistic. It's not even semi-theistic. It just pretends to be theistic, but actually isn't. Maya, the theism of Mayavad is just meant for cheating. That's all. <laughs>